Today's Mass Readings and Gospel Reflection March 17, 2022 Thursday The Second Week of Lent We bless your name, O Lord, for sending your own incarnate Son to become part of a family, so that, as he lived its life, he would experience its worries and its joys. We ask you, Lord, to protect and watch over this family, so that in the strength of your grace its members may enjoy prosperity, possess the priceless gift of your peace, and, as the church alive in the home, bear witness in this world to your glory. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. First reading. A reading from the book of the prophet Jeremiah. Jeremiah chapter 17 verse 5 to 10. Thus says the Lord, Cursed is the man who trusts in human beings, who seeks his strength in flesh, whose heart turns away from the Lord. He is like a barren bush in the desert that enjoys no change of season, but stands in a lava waste, a salt and empty earth. Blessed is the man who trusts in the Lord, whose hope is the Lord. He is like a tree planted beside the waters that stretches out its roots to the stream. It fears not the heat when it comes. Its leaves stay green. In the year of drought it shows no distress, but still bears fruit. More torchless than all else is the human heart beyond remedy. Who can understand it? I, the Lord, alone probe the mind and test the heart, to reward everyone according to his ways, according to the merit of his deeds. The Word of the Lord Responsorial Psalm Psalms chapter 1 verse 1 to 2, 3, 4 and 6 Let our response be, Blessed are they who hope in the Lord. Bless the man who follows not the counsel of the wicked nor walks in the way of sinners, nor sits in the company of the insolent, but delights in the law of the Lord and meditates on his law day and night. Response. Blessed are they who hope in the Lord. He is like a tree planted near running water, that yields its fruit in due season, and whose leaves never fade. Whatever he does, prospers. Response. Blessed are they who hope in the Lord. Not so, the wicked, not so. They are like chaff which the wind drives away. For the Lord watches over the way of the just. But the way of the wicked vanishes. Response. Blessed are they who hope in the Lord. Verse before the Gospel. Luke chapter 8 verse 15. Blessed are they who have kept the word with a generous heart and yield a harvest through perseverance. Gospel Reading A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Luke chapter 16 verse 19 to 31. Jesus said to the Pharisees, There was a rich man who dressed in purple garments and fine linen and dined sumptuously each day. And lying at his door was a poor man named Lazarus, covered with sores, who would gladly have eaten his fill of the scraps that fell from the rich man's table. Dogs even used to come and lick his sores. When the poor man died, he was carried away by angels to the bosom of Abraham. The rich man also died and was buried. And from the netherworld, where he was in torment, he raised his eyes and saw Abraham far off and Lazarus at his side. And he cried out, Father Abraham, have pity on me. Send Lazarus to dip the tip of his finger in water and cool my tongue, for I am suffering torment in these flames. Abraham replied, My child, remember that you received what was good during your lifetime while Lazarus likewise received what was bad. But now he is comforted here, whereas you are tormented. Moreover, between us and you a great chasm is established to prevent anyone from crossing who might wish to go from our side to yours or from your side to ours. He said, Then I beg you, Father, send him to my father's house, for I have five brothers, so that he may warn them, lest they too come to this place of torment. 
But Abraham replied. They have Moses and the prophets. Let them listen to them. He said, Oh no, Father Abraham. But if someone from the dead goes to them, they will repent. Then Abraham said, If they will not listen to Moses and the prophets, neither will they be persuaded if someone should rise from the dead. The Gospel of the Lord Before we proceed with the video, don't forget to like the video and subscribe to our channel. Also, please hit the notification bell, so you won't miss out when we release new videos. Feel free to share your comments, suggestions, and reflections at the comments section down below. Thank you and God bless. Now, let's proceed with the video. The Reflection on Today's Gospel The founders of communism were all atheists. They believed capitalism was held in place by religion. For without religion, and the hope of heaven, capitalism could never survive. The masses would not allow it to survive. As Karl Marx once wrote, Religion is the opiate of the masses. The abolition of religion as the illusory happiness of the people is required for their real happiness. Although he states that religion is the heart of a heartless world, it is, according to him, in need of a major overhaul. Communism and atheism are the answers. In his letter to Timothy, St. Paul wrote, Tell the rich in the present age not to be proud and not to rely on so uncertain a thing as wealth but rather on God, who richly provides us with all things for our enjoyment. Tell them to do good, to be rich in good works, to be generous, ready to share, thus accumulating as treasure a good foundation for the future, so as to win the life that is true life. From all that I have read, religion, Judaism, Christianity and Islam, appears to be more like a warning to the powerful and rich, than an opiate for the poor and destitute. But when all is said and done, the good news is a message of God's love. To love God above all things and to love thy neighbor, even thy enemy, above thyself. This is not fair. A rich man who dressed in purple garments, after thousands and thousands of years, you would think by now we would have solved the problem of material poverty, or that it would be considered as much of a national disgrace as slavery or racial discrimination. Apparently, it is not. It is still very much tolerated. You would think by now, after so many millennia, the tragedy of war would be something relegated to the past. It obviously is not. In fact, its execution still generates trillions of dollars worth of business and wealth, even at the expense of priceless lives. Like so many things, the problem with the war on poverty and the war on war is rooted in our deliberate misrepresentation of humanity and our minimalist demand for justice. Humanity. I can stand it when people claim that Hitler or Stalin acted like an animals. They didn't. Animals do not experiment on others or torture others. And they definitely do not discriminate against others based on race or religion. No, Hitler and Stalin did not act like animals. They acted like human beings. Rational, irrational and emotional. I could even say they acted like barbarians. Both men were excellent public speakers. They both dress well and were well-mannered. And from all I can tell, they always treated their guests graciously. They weren't loons or insane, either. Apparently, they loved their friends and hated their enemies. What's so crazy about that? They did what they did to get what they wanted. They intentionally deceived world leaders, such like Chamberlain, and their people maybe they wanted to be deceived. In the end, they held millions of people hostage for years. Now when it comes to Hitler, we must admit he grew up in Austria and Germany, two of the most civilized nations in the world. He was not brought up in a jungle by wild animals but in the land of Mozart, Beethoven, Kant and Einstein. So why do we call them animals? I believe it is to hide the fact that they were humans. It's meant to protect our minds from the obvious. 
the fact that being a human being isn't good enough anymore. It won't cut it. We can't rely on it. We all need to evolve into something greater than human. Jesus invites us to be more like him. Justice is fair, but not beautiful. Are rich people bad people? Of course not. Most of them made their wealth the honest way. They worked hard and were very creative. I'm not about to say they don't deserve what they have. What's fair is fair. They made it and we bought it. That's fair, and let's admit it. Most of us have given them the money they now have. As you can see, justice may be fair, but it is not beautiful. What is beautiful is love, and love is not fair. At least not Christ's love. The ways of the Lord are unfair. The rich man botched up God's final test not because he was unfair to Lazarus but because he was fair and just to him. He left him alone. The Lord tells his listeners that the rich man would often walk by Lazarus, who sat near to his door, day and night. It isn't enough that we don't kill anyone. That's fair. It's absolutely necessary that we start saving people. That's unfair. Justice is fair, but it is not beautiful. Christian love is entirely unfair and remarkably beautiful. Love your neighbors is fair. Hate your enemies is fair. Love your enemies and do good to those who persecute you is unfair. But when it happens, it is stunning, holy. It is transformative. It is revolutionary and evolutionary. From human being to child of God, 